What's going on, Canes fans, and welcome to episode number two of Walking and Venting with Coop. And it's exactly what it sounds like it is. It's me walking along the edge of my property and venting about hot topics when it comes to the Miami Hurricanes. And I upload a new episode every Sunday, and we just keep it real, honest, and blunt. I'm 100% transparent with you guys on how I feel about whatever the topic is and today is such a gloomy rainy day which is quite fitting after yesterday's beatdown losing to michigan state 38 to 17 but that's actually not what we're talking about in this one i know that you've already seen the title and i want you to know that you can be 100 percent honest and blunt as well just like me down in the comment section and it's a judgment free zone so I want you to speak your mind, speak your piece, tell me why I'm right, tell me why I'm wrong, tell me why you agree, you disagree. But anyways, let's go ahead and just dive right into it because boy, oh boy, this is an interesting one. And I'm going to have a lot of people who are going to come at me, potentially, because I'm going to let you know how I feel about this topic at the end of the video. But first, let's discuss it. Is it time to bench quarterback Derek King? And go ahead and insert your shock face because I know a lot of people are gonna be really confused by this topic and can't believe that we're even having this conversation. But let's talk about it for a second because I think there is a reason to have this discussion. So, De'Eric King came in with a lot of hype this season. I mean, if we go back and look at some interviews and some of the talks early on, I, if I'm not mistaken, Kirk Herbstreit even came out and said that he potentially thought De'Eric King might be the face of college football in 2021. De'Eric King signed all of these NIL deals, and overall, he up until now, he's had a pretty good, pretty good run at the University of Miami. I mean, he brought us a mobile quarterback when we really needed it. Uh, he brought us leadership and just overall stability at that position, a guy that we could lean on and rely on. But three games into this season, De'Eric King is struggling. And I want to let you know that it's not all on De'Eric King. Obviously, uh, the offensive line is a, a huge part of the blame. Rhett Lashley's play calling is also to blame. So don't come in here and think that I'm a De'Eric King hater. I will sit here and stand in the paint and defend De'Eric King. But I also want to talk about it because we need to look at what's best for this program and for the future of the Miami Hurricanes football team. So, the Eric King, of course, you know, had the injury last year. Uh, he, he battled back, fought back, recovered quicker than anybody thought possible and was ready to go for this 2021 season. But as I said, he struggled. Uh, he's thrown more interceptions than he's thrown touchdown passes. He fumbled the ball two times in the Michigan State game. Uh, his balls have been low and flat, really haven't had a lot of zip on them, and he struggled to run the RPO. It's, it's been really just a, a lot of a negativity. I don't have a lot of good things right now that I can say about De'Eric King other than his fight, his grit, and his leadership. And, and that's really about it. I mean, him being a mobile quarterback does give us the ability to, you know, kind of make up for that weak O-line. Uh, but at the end of the day, the teams know that he's a mobile quarterback, and they have mostly kept him contained. So uh, I, I want to talk about why I think that Manny Diaz would struggle to bench De'Eric King, why I think that he wouldn't actually do it. And the first thing is when De'Eric King hit the transfer portal, he had a lot of options on the table. He didn't have to come to Miami, but he came to Miami when we really needed a quarterback, and he was faithful to Manny Diaz when he didn't have to. He had other options. Uh, number two, De'Eric King has seniority over the other, other quarterbacks, and we all know Manny Diaz, and as much as we want to preach and believe that seniority is not still a thing, it's still a thing. So, seniority, uh, De'Eric King is a great leader in the locker room and on and off the field. Uh, he's a great mentor 
for the younger quarterbacks, the TVD and Jake Garcia and Matoka. And he's just overall a great ambassador for the University of Miami. He, he, you know, he's a nice stand-up guy. He's a hard worker in the weight room and on the field. So it makes it really tough for Manny Diaz to be able to bench him regardless of the stats or regardless of how the, uh, the offense is looking on the field on game day. Now, I said, though, that De'Eric King is not the only problem with this offense. And really, realistically, he's not the main problem. The main problem revolves around the offensive line. And again, De'Eric King makes it look not quite as bad, probably, as it really actually even is, as bad as it really is, because he, he is pretty elusive. You can tell, I keep, I keep sighing, because this is just so hard for me to talk about. But I do want to say that I think De'Eric King might be battling more than just his knee injury. So, he, he, you know, everybody says, you know, he's been cleared medically. He's 100% ready to go. But I think that maybe he did possibly injure his shoulder in that Alabama game. And I think that he's been trying to fight through it. Because I mentioned he's not had as much zip on the ball. We know that De'Eric King has struggled with his deep ball. Even ever since he got here to Miami in his first year, there were times he struggled with the deep ball. But this year, it's been especially bad. And if you notice, uh, he's either not seeing those, those open receivers, uh, he's making bad reads, or we're not really calling plays to throw the deep ball because maybe Rhett Lashley knows something we don't know. And maybe he knows that De'Eric King is trying to nurse an injury a little bit. And if that's the case, man, it speaks for itself, right? So I appreciate his fight and his grit, but I'm just going to go ahead and be blunt and, and get to the point and tell you what I think my opinion is and what I think we should do. I'm going to explain it in, in, in two different ways. Number one, if the Eric King is in fact battling some type of injury, if, if he cannot stand up and say, I am 100% ready to go, I am good to go, then I think we should bench him because it's, it's doing more harm than good. You have to know where to draw the line. If, if he is battling a shoulder injury, uh, if he can't throw the ball 100%, if he's still hesitant with the knee maybe, you're doing more harm than good by trying to come back and be in the game. When he did go down in the Michigan State game, I appreciate the fight. But I think that it was maybe time to let him sit for a couple of series because he looked like he, he wasn't really feeling it, like he was in some pain. Number two, I think that it could potentially be smart to continue to play De'Eric King just because, again, our O-line is just struggling so badly that uh, our next option is Tyler Van Dyke or Jake Garcia, which, by the way, it would be Tyler Van Dyke because he's the number two quarterback. And I don't know with the current play calling that Tyler Van Dyke would survive an entire game. I don't think he would live four quarters and that's a little extreme right but i'm just saying that he's not as mobile as Derek king and even though the offense still hasn't been performing very well tyler van dyke might get killed back there bro because he's just not going to be as mobile and people who say to put in jake garcia i mean that's cool too but still jake garcia is probably not going to be as elusive as Derek king either so I think that the second point I was trying to make is we continue to play De'Eric King if he is, in fact, 100%. But if we drop an ACC game, so we've got Central Connecticut coming up. That'll most likely be a cupcake. I hope and pray it is. But if we come out and we lose another game, any game, especially ACC game, I think at that point you bench De'Eric King and you have eight or nine games, possibly, if we lose an early ACC game, that you can go ahead and prepare for the next man up. Because let's be real. I'm just being honest. I'm not hating on the guy. De'Eric King's not going to play at the next level. He's not going to play in the NFL. So I think at that point, you realize you're probably not going to play in the ACC championship game because we're, we're just... Guys, it's more than wins and losses. Just look at the product on the field. 
Pay attention to the way that this team is performing. Look at the body language. Look at the execution. Look at the coaching. I'm not trying to be negative, but I'm just trying to say that I'm trying to think ahead. And continuing to play De'Eric King, if he's not 100%, or if we drop a, another game, especially in the ACC, then I think that it makes sense to put him on the bench. And I realize that it's a hard thing to do. We already discussed it. I already mentioned about the great things he's done for us and he's helped us out and his image and everything with the university. It would be a big deal for Manny to bench him. But I think if either of those two things are the case, he's battling an injury or we drop another game, I think it's the smart thing to do if Manny cares about the future of this program. And I think that's a, another step for Manny, something that he maybe needs to do to show fans, to, to try to help fans maybe have a little belief in him. Because right now, it's at an all-time low. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're gassing up the planes and they're printing the banners already regardless. But one thing that Manny could do, I'm getting a little off topic, is to show that he'll bench guys and try the young guys. He'll put the new blood in there because guess what? Brinson looked pretty good. He, he, he But he, when it came to running backs, guess what? Cameron stayed in. Cody Brown didn't get any carries. Dad Franklin didn't get any carries. So the seniority thing is still something that Manny struggles with and he doesn't seem to want to let go. And fans would maybe, I mean, it's still got to be wins. It's going to take wins for fans to want Manny to stay. But it would be a step in the right direction if he would let some of the younger guys play. We saw questionable things from Gervin Hall, still questionable play from McLeod. But I'm getting off topic, right? So in my opinion, is it time to bench De'Eric King it's a loaded question, but yes, if he's battling the injury, yes, if we lose another game. Because at the end of the day, as rough as our offense is, De'Eric King still gives us the best chance to win games, as long as he's 100%, with the way this O-line is performing and with this type of offense that Rhett Lashley is calling. Because... There's still the chance if Rhett Lashley was maybe willing to change it up a little bit because you noticed that once we started rolling De'Eric King out, we were having a little more success because it got him out on the edge and gave him time to actually make a play because otherwise we, the opponent's in the backfield in a matter of 1 to 1.2 seconds. He, he doesn't have any time. So I mentioned, you know, if we put TVD or Garcia back there that they might struggle, but... If Rhett Lashley was willing to maybe change up the offense a tad, one of those guys might be able to shine back there because I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure that Tyler Van Dyke and or Jake Garcia probably have a stronger, more accurate arm than De'Eric King. And like I said, it's not me hating on him. It's me wanting what's best for the football program and thinking about the future. We can't continue to play a guy that might be struggling with an injury. We can't continue to play a guy just because he helped us out when we needed him and coming here through the transfer portal. We can't continue to play a guy just because we like him, because he's a good guy. Because at the end of the day, we got to do what puts us in the best position to win football games. And if we, if we are struggling and if we're going to continue to lose anyways, I'm going to be blunt. Put some young blood in there and think about the future of the Miami Hurricanes and this football program because right now it looks like we're not going anywhere this season. And I'm jumping the gun a little bit. Uh, we haven't got into ACC play, but some serious, serious things would need to happen, guys. Because like I said, I'm not just talking wins and losses. I'm talking about what I'm actually seeing on the field. Do you realize we are the worst team in college football when it comes to missed tackles, just tackling in general? We're at the bottom of the barrel, I'm pretty sure, statistically. So there's just too many question marks. There's too many areas that we're struggling in to make me think we can compete in the ACC. But as soon as we drop another game, if that happens, yes. I do think it's time to bench De'Eric King. And if he's not 100%, if De'Eric King says I'm 99.5%, I think it's time to put him on the bench. And it is no hard feelings. It is nothing but love from me. De'Eric King is a trooper. He's a leader. And it will hurt 
to take our leader on offense and sit him on the bench. But this is a hot topic that I wanted to discuss and I wanted to be honest, but I think if any of those things are the case, I think it's time to do it, Manny. So let me know you guys opinions down in the comment section below if you see me keep like itching and scratching there are mosquitoes everywhere because it's it's a rainy day out here so i'm getting to eat up so i'm gonna go inside uh chill enjoy the rest of my sunday maybe watch uh the dallas cowboys game the i think it already started they're probably already losing to the chargers but it, it, it is what it is of course both of my football teams have to suck both my nfl team and my college team life is rough for coach coop man but let me know your comments. Like I said, it's okay if you think I'm crazy. It's okay if you don't agree. These videos, walking and venting with Coop, are always going to be hot topics. And there's going to be a ton of people arguing in the comment section. And that's all right. Could I be wrong? Yeah. We, we might bench the Eric King if one of those scenarios comes up. And Tyler Van Dyke may suck it up. Jake Garcia may look terrible because he's not had enough time at the college level. I don't know. But I'm just saying with what I'm seeing right now, if those circumstances are what happens, if that's what it is right now, then I, man, I think it's got to be done, bro. But remember though, guys, we're all one big happy college football family. But at the end of the day, I got to say, it's always better. Let me see if I can set this up. When you get to rep the you. Coach Coop, and there is literally a mushroom right here.